Thanks for joining me today. This is Danny, and welcome back to my modded 1.12.2 series. This is the third and final episode of our Deep Resonance setup, in which we are completely automating our Deep Resonance setup from start to finish. We've got our Laser Infusion setup completely automated now with RF Tools Control, and we're using XNet to automate everything else. At this point, we have everything automated all the way through the creation of the crystal itself. And so now all we have to do is get that crystal where it needs to go, get the spent crystals where they need to go, and have the power gen turn on and off automatically, and to set up some radiation monitors. So when we left off, we just got our first crystal, hooray! With a strength of 84%, efficiency of 94%, and a purity of 100%. This is going to be one powerful crystal. So the next thing we need to do is we need to get it to automatically come over into this pedestal. Put a connector on the pedestal. I'm also going to put a connector on this oak chest. That's where our spent crystals are going to go because we're going to want to put those back into the um, infusing laser. Okay. Cool. So I think we should be able to just say, hey, if there's something in here, put it in there. Um, obviously, if there's already a crystal in here, it won't put another one in there. That should be pretty straightforward. So we have an item channel. Need to make sure that it's not going to... Okay, so it can't insert in there because it's filtered. Can't insert into the smelter because that's filtered. So, extract from our crystallizer. And we're going to insert into our pedestal. Yay. <laughs> nice. So now it's making another crystal. So we should be able to get... What is it? Two, about two and a half crystals out of this thing? Okay, so now our crystal is all set up over here. So... We can, if we take a look at it, we will see that this thing is going to generate 18,794 RF per tick. <laughs> nice, very nice. Um, now the generator, we have our generator multi-block structure over here. It has one generator block. Um, that's not going to be enough. Each generator block can generate or can pull up to 5,000 RF per tick. So if we were to turn this thing on right now, we will see that it's going to complain. It's going to try to start up. And then it's going to say some crystals are too powerful for this size generator. So we are going to need four generators for this guy. Now, the crystals that we're normally going to be making are probably going to be around 15,000 RF per tick or less. I think it, I think it ended up being like 14,900 or something like that. So we would only need three generators. But I'm just going to make four um, because as we move forward, we're probably going to be getting more, more powerful crystals. Um, you can see this is still going. Our purity strength and efficiency our strength is going up our purity is actually going up even though the redstone is pulling it down because our filters are raising it faster than the redstone is pulling it down um, so I'm gonna make a couple more generator blocks and we could just set these over here it's it's a free form multi-block structure as long as everything's touching um, so we now have four generator blocks if we turn this thing on it should be able to handle the power and there we go nice generating <laughs> look at how quickly that buffer is filling up and it'll just keep going. I mean, we'll end up wasting if we let it run. Um, so we're going to have to have something in place to have it turn on and off um, based on um, our power needs. So the last step of our automation now is pulling the stuff out of this chest and putting it in there. So I'm going to put... I, I was... Man, I spent so much time today roaming around trying to get these resonating crystals. They're pretty rare. Like, it seems like you see them all over the place when you're out there you know, mining or whatever, and you happen to stumble on them, but they're really rare. Um, we actually made two and a half, well, 2.66 crystals with the one tank. Um, so when this thing is done, it's going to finish making this crystal, and we'll end up we'll end up getting three more crystals out of it, cause, and then having a little bit left over. Uh, so we've run out of this stuff, so it pumped a bunch of redstone, and I'm just going to pull it out for now. Um, and I turned that off because now I want to test what happens when we pull out of here and, and to make sure that it goes into the right slot 
in the infusing laser. Didn't work because it put it in the wrong slot. So somehow we have to have it go into that slot. Well, I'm making a second program. That is our DR Catalyst program. We're going to clear this. And this is just going to be an event repeat. And it's going to run every 100 ticks. Doesn't matter. Um, that would be every five seconds. And we'll do a single run, sure, fine. And all this thing is going to do is going to pull. Oh, actually, I guess we're going to have to put a node on that thing. So I'm setting up a new node over here. It's in the DRES channel. We'll do the same channel. It's called spent. <laughs> That's where our spent crystals are going to be. They're going to be to the west of that. And in here, we're going to redo the uh, net setup. And this time it should find four nodes. So all this program is going to do is it's going to run every five seconds and it's going to it's going to fetch items from inventory spent west doesn't matter which side uh, doesn't matter which slot doesn't matter what item um, doesn't doesn't matter what amount it's just going to grab whatever it can and it's going to put it in slot one no actually it's going to be slot zero because this program or this card is only going to get one slot so it's going to end up being slot zero internal processor slot um, or dick rotable we don't care about that and then it's going to push items into infuser side down this time the slot does, oh wait, no. Yeah, this time the slot does matter. So it's going to be slot number one um, because I'm pretty sure, we'll find out in a second, but I'm pretty sure that this is zero and that's one. So we want it to go into slot number one. The amount doesn't matter. The slot in is going to be zero. Close. And it's just going to run every five seconds so we don't have to do anything else. And that's it. That's the whole program. So we're going to save and we're going to call this... <laughs> Move spent, and that's it. I throw that in there. Actually, we're going to put this in slot two. This one's going to take that second. Yep, missing the internal slot. Okay, so it's just going to run every five seconds. And so now, if we put something in this chest, every five seconds it should get pulled, and hopefully. Hmm. Nope. Okay. So that's still not the right slot. That's interesting. So maybe that is slot zero. Get in there. Okay. We make sure we have to make sure we have the right card because we do not want to overwrite this program because that would suck if I had to rewrite that whole program. So let's just change this to slot zero. Oops. Close. Save. Okay, why? Hmm. Let's throw that in slot number two. Put this in there. Oops. And yay! <laughs> it went in the right slot. We know it went in the right slot because we've got 2255 in here and there was zero. So nice. That is working now. So now what's going to happen is when this crystal is spent, like when we use all the power in this crystal, it's going to get the gray crystal is going to get end up getting dumped in this chest, which will then end up being put in this slot. Assume, oops, in this slot, assuming there's room for it, and it's going to fill up our cattle, our uh, this stuff until that's full. That should give us more than enough to infuse our next batch. Hooray! So now there's one last thing we need to do, and that is to have this thing turn on and off automatically. What I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do it based on this power cell because this resonating ore is not necessarily a renewable resource. It's something that we get from mining, and we have to go through this expensive process um, as opposed to our canola oil, which is fully renewable and basically kind of pays for itself in the power usage that it requires in order to set itself up. Um, so this is going to be our primary power source. It's always going to run as long as there's any space in this power cell. Um, back here, 
we are going to give this guy a redstone signal only when this power cell is low. Sensor on our power cell saying that energy, when the energy is less than, I wish I could do a percentage. Can we do a percentage? Because this may change as our as our network grows it doesn't look like we can do percentage okay so on the so we have a total of 10 million rf in our network so we're going to say if it's less than 8 million so 1 2 3 4 5 6 zeros we're going to output to color blue um, it would be this redstone proxy On blue, we are going to output redstone of 15. Okay, I guess just to test this, I'm just going to change the parameters. Um, we'll just say 18 million <laughs> just for now, and we should see that thing kick in. No, we're not seeing it kick in. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I put a lever on there and toggled it on and off, and then it... So I changed it back to 8 million. This is not outputting redstone signal, but it's still running. So I'm going to... Okay, that's interesting. So apparently it needs a block update. And the redstone proxy from Xnet is correctly outputting the redstone signal, but it's not giving a block update. I'm hungry. <laughs> I guess we have a little radiation in here. We, we'll have to set up some radiation monitoring in here. But we're going to have to do something a little bit differently here because the redstone proxy does not cause a block update, which apparently the generator requires in order to recognize that the redstone signal has changed. So I have a connector going directly into a piece of redstone dust, which is going right into the generator controller um, because that does, cause a red, or that does cause a block update when it receives a redstone signal, unlike the redstone proxy. Um, so now this should work that as soon as this guy gets a signal, um, this guy's going to start generating power. When we reach the threshold, or our power gets low enough, so for instance, if I just change this to say, hey, we need 18 million power instead of 8 million, then it's going to kick in and start filling up its little internal buffer very, very, very quickly, <laughs> and then it's just going to waste power. Um, so we're going to set that back down to 8 million. So we do have one little problem here, and that is that if we're producing 18,000 RF per tick, um, <laughs> this guy is only accepting 10,000 of it right now um, because it can do 5,000 on each side and two sides are touching it. I just added another power cell here and kind of reconfigured things so that we're now inputting a total of 20,000 RF per tick. And let's get rid of that lever. So there we have it. It's all set up. It's all automated. We never have to touch this system again. Oh. Actually, there's one thing I'm going to have to do, and that's flip this lever. <laughs> Once we get some crystal in here so that we can continue catalyzing this thing or continue infusing this thing because we ran out of, or we're not, we don't have enough stuff in there. So we'll have to wait till that crystal dies. And then as soon as that crystal dies, it's going to end up going in here. And I'll be able to flip that lever, and then we'll, this infusion process will start, and we'll never have to touch it again. It's completely 100% automated, and this power will only be used when our power cell gets down to 8 million RF. So, in other words, when our canola isn't keeping up with our power needs. All right, now the last thing I want to do is to set up some radiation monitors. Now, we do have radi a radiation monitor that you can hold in your hand that will tell you the radiation where you're standing. Um, what I'd like to do is to, is to set up some permanent radiation monitors along with a screen. Your vision clears. Oh, we're going to need a screen controller too. Um, so basically what we do is we make these radiation sensors, like a show, and we place these in various places. So I'm going to put one of them in here. Um, maybe um, there and I'm gonna put one out here somewhere maybe <laughs> maybe in the floor here actually maybe I'll put that one in the floor too so there's kind of one on each side in the floor so it looks consistent 
that one like right there. <clears throat> and then I want to put one outside in the backyard here. <laughs> Just so that we can be aware if, oops, if anything goes wrong, if our radiation starts leaking through or whatever. And then we take these radiation screen modules and we click. So I'm actually, we click on these. So I'm going to start here. So radiation module is set to block radiation sensor. And we can put that as, whoop, I did not want that in there. We put that in there as module one. And it's telling us where that radiation sensor is. Um, this one is going to be that one. And then finally, this one is going to be the one in the backyard. And the screen controller we can hide anywhere. I'm just going to put it down here in the basement somewhere near a connector so that we can get power into it. Um, I don't know if this is going to be too far away. Let's let's try let's try it right there. Okay, it did find a connected screen. Yay! Um, and then we got to give it some power. Wait, no, that's east. So we're going to tell this guy to connect to the east, and now it's going to connect to the screen controller which we should now see in here, right there. So we're going to put some power in there and we should now see that that thing is powering up and our screen <laughs> is showing minus one. Uh, I guess that means there's no radiation. Okay, so I made a text module. I'm gonna throw that up here and we're gonna just say radiation and we're gonna do that in large letters, right? Yeah, and then here, actually, can we center that? Yeah, nice, okay. Power. Okay, so we have our inner, we have our plant, we have outside. So now if we run this thing, let's say we go in here and we tell it. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to go in there. Oh, I don't have a lever there anymore. Okay. All right, whatever. So we'll go in here. We tell it we want more power. Um, how much power do we have? We have 11 million. So let's say we want 18 million. So that's going to run for a while. We're just wasting power at the moment. Um, we doing with power we're still at 96 percent and we'll see that our radiation is going up very quickly inside there and very slowly out both out here and out back outside so it looks like it's about one percent <laughs> so it's about it's getting rid of about 99 percent of the radiation out here nice and now we can see the radiation is gradually going down so if you do have any questions, comments, or ideas, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to click the like button and join me next time. In the next episode, we are going to find a way to use all this power. I do hope you join me for that. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.